What going everybody? I am your Jamaican queen, Miss Y. You are tuned into How I See It TV and this is Accurate Context Episode 3. In this episode, I'm going to do a little deep dive into why I feel or why I believe Robin Dixon was indeed party to the plan to come for Candace and Chris's marriage during season seven. Even though she came across in the first half of the season as if she was really on Chris and Candace's side. Um, I'm also going to show that the breakdown in the friendship between Robin and Candace is not entirely Candace's fault. I'm going to show how Robin, you know, made the first blow to the friendship and how Candace, as usual, responded. As always, Candace never shoots the first shot. She always reacts to being attacked. But before we get into it, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you like my content as we say in jamaica if you feel like this need crowd then invite some people to come on over here and please leave a comment so that i can know how you see things too so let's get into it the Fair Use Act found in Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Act allows for limited use of copyrighted material without permission from the copyright holder for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. Everything that will be said in this video is allegedly and in my opinion. So the first time we heard anything about Chris Bassett doing anything inappropriate was when Robin and Ashley were in a scene together and Ashley shared that Chris slid into her DMs. We then found out that he didn't slide into her DMs. She posted a story and he responded to that story which would appear in her DMs um, by saying that she should have come to the W. Ashley wanted to make that message more than what it was by insinuating that well Chris was at the W at 2 a.m in the morning and it wasn't with his wife and she felt uncomfortable right Robin made her know that well Chris is the manager of the rooftop I think it's a lounge or club at the W and perhaps he was just promoting doing his job in promoting um, the business. And he was in a place where he felt that he and Ashley were cool enough where he could have done that without it being taken a different way. Okay, so cool, cool. No issues there. However, Robin then goes into a scene with Giselle and she shares this conversation that her and Ashley had. And this gives Giselle the window to jump through where she now shares how Chris also slides into her DMs and that makes her feel uncomfortable. And then she also, she also used the opportunity to share how during season six reunion chris came to her hotel room to have a private conversation and they were alone in the bedroom um the way how giselle presented it was that chris was trying to get with her and that she knows of plenty of men who have tried to get with her seemingly using the tactics that Chris was using and that he was a sneaky link and that it made her uncomfortable and that she too is going to have a conversation with Candace about Chris's behavior because now he's making all the women feel uncomfortable. And here is my thing with 
both scenes. It seems, in my opinion, that Robin allowed Giselle and Ashley to use her as the neutral party who they would come to to bring us the BS about Chris. Robin could have said, y'all can do whatever y'all want with this storyline, but I'm not going to be a part of it in any way, shape, or form. I honestly believe that these women, when they go into scenes, they have a general idea of what the scenes are about. I don't think that Robin was shocked that Ashley was going to show her that DM or that response to her story in her DM. And I don't believe that she did not know that Giselle was eventually going to bring up what happened in New York during season six reunion. I don't think Robin did not know that Giselle was not was not going to bring that to season seven. So this is why I believe Robin was part of this plan to bring the storyline about Chris and the Bassett's marriage to season seven because she was a willing party in these scenes, even though she came across as the person who did not believe what was being said and as the person who had Chris's back. So Robin knows that Ashley was going to talk to Candace about the whole DM situation. And we don't see her send Candace a text or meet up with Candace about it. And she also knows that Giselle was going to also speak to Candace. And we don't see her text Candace a heads up or say in the confessionals, you know, I met with Ashley and I met with Giselle and I just felt like Candace and Chris are my friends and I should give them a heads up that these conf- these conversations about Chris is happening or that these two women want to have a sit down with Candace. So Candace handles Ashley and that goes smoothly. There was no blow up. And then Candace goes into another scene blind because her friend Robin didn't give her the heads up. She goes into the TikTok, Ashley's TikTok event blind that Giselle was going to have this sit down with her. She has the sit down with Giselle. Giselle brings up, you know, how Chris absolutely made her feel uncomfortable and what he did was wrong and that he's making the women feel uncomfortable and we got that iconic fort wall scene and candace candace leaves right candace leaves robin out of nowhere if y'all remember i tried to find the clip but couldn't um Robin goes and she meets up with Chris and Candace. They were already out to lunch and they were shocked when they saw Robin walk up. To me, and in my opinion, the producers planned that scene. It was supposed to be Chris and Candace talking, but they call Robin up and they're like, look, you need to go into this scene with Candace and Chris. They're filming today. Go have a sit down. Maybe they wanted her to get some more information from Chris about what happened in New York. I don't know. But it was weird because both Chris and Candace looked very much surprised that Robin was at the same restaurant that they were at. And in the scene, Robin says, listen, I talked with Giselle the same night everything happened and I told her that I didn't see anything wrong with you know Chris coming to speak to her in her dressing room you know even if they were alone in the dressing room so that's what Robin tells the Bassett so why does Robin then go into a scene with Mia who supposedly at this point has no clue about 
what Giselle has said about Chris and has no clue about what Ashley has said about Chris. This meetup between Robin and Mia was supposed to be Robin apologizing to Mia about the whole cancer, no cancer um, statement and about Robin saying that Mia is attention seeking or was attention seeking with some of the posts Mia made around the time we all thought that she perhaps had cancer, right? So this was a kumbaya moment so Robin could understand more about what Mia was dealing with health wise and apologize and they could be cool because if we remember at that same TikTok um, event Giselle also apologized to Mia so in my mind because Giselle apologized to Mia Robin also had to go and apologize to Mia so they have their kumbaya moment and all is well. Why does Robin then ask Mia, um, do you know what Candace was saying at the TikTok um, dance event that Ashley hosted? Why does Robin bring that up? If you just had a sit down with the Bassett and you've been saying, I don't believe the BS, why are you looping Mia in if you have their back? Mia does not need to be looped in unless all four of y'all have been in a group chat and y'all are like, we need to push this storyline about Chris along. And the only way we can push that along is if we get more people saying that he's making them uncomfortable, right? So... Here goes Mia because Robin gives her a window. Mia jumps through the window and says, well, since you're saying that, I have something to. Chris was looking at me strangely at Karen's spring party and it made me feel uncomfortable. So I believe what Giselle is saying. That's Robin's fault. Because if if Mia supposedly had no idea about why Candace stormed off at that TikTok party, then Mia should have stayed out of the loop. If you are Team Candace and Chris, then there's no reason to move this storyline along, Robin. And you did this by looping Mia in during this scene. Now, my question is, after this scene with Mia, did Robin call Candace up and say, and, and say to Candace, hey, you know, I just also had to sit down with Mia and she's telling me that she feels like Chris was looking at her inappropriately at Karen's event. Girl, these girls are crazy with these narratives about Chris. Like, did Robin do that? Or... Did she stay silent and once again have Candace go into another scene blind? Because guess what happens next? What happens next is the winery scene. The winery scene for Wendy's burn session where... Out of nowhere, Ashley wants to talk to Candace again about Chris. And Ashley is stating some things that Ashley wouldn't have known unless there was a scene where Mia, Ashley, and Giselle got together and were talking. Or there was a group chat with just Ashley, Giselle, and Mia. Because how... Does Ashley know that Mia said that Chris made her uncomfortable? In my opinion, the only way Ashley could have this information is if Robin told her. Because at this point, watching the show in season seven, 
watching this episode, the only person that had this information was Mia and Robin. Because remember, in the clip I showed prior, Mia and Robin, they met up. Robin told Mia about what Giselle and Ashley had been saying about Chris and Mia inserted her lie about Chris staring at her and making her feel uncomfortable. So at this point, the only person that had this information other than Mia who was lying was Robin. And conveniently in this burn session scene before Ashley um, begins talking to Candace, Robin leaves the scene and was in the sprinter van, supposedly waiting for her Uber. So Ashley drops another bomb on Candace, saying that one of her friends said that at Karen's event, Chris was flirting with her and speaking to her inappropriately and was essentially, you know, leaned up rubbing on her thighs. Karen goes out to the sprinter van and tells Robin what Ashley said and Giselle also goes out to the sprinter van after she has another sit down with Candace and she tells Robin how Ashley said that Chris grabbed one of Ashley's friends inappropriately and then Robin, Giselle and Mia they go to the um the confessionals in one of the episodes and they are all repeating that chris essentially actually assaulted someone because when you grab somebody inappropriately without their permission that is actual assault so these three women are in the confessional kiki keying and laughing about about this and Ashley clearly says in one of the episodes that she didn't say that Chris grabbed the girl she just said that Chris was rubbing up on the girl but either way it was a lie and that's assault but I digress so now I think that it's after this scene was shot at Wendy's burn session event where Candace probably went home and she's telling Chris, you know, everything that's being said about him. Chris takes to his Twitter and he goes off and he's saying, y'all not ready for what's about to go down. Call me what you want, but a liar I am not. And if that's the path you choose, I promise you will be sorry. In another tweet, Chris says, Broke, live off my mother-in-law, no job, whatever. Those are lies for a TV show. This is my character. And he puts that in all caps. You are trying to attack. And I will not sit down and say nothing. So he says all of this on Twitter. And now here goes once again, Robin in a scene with Giselle as they're in this boutique shopping, I guess, for Mia's Miami trip. And Giselle is saying how Chris is out here threatening them, quote unquote, threatening them on Twitter. And Robin is clearly now showing us that she was never really on the Bassett side, side, in my opinion. Because in this boutique scene, Robin says... You know, she just feels like Candace is over-dramatizing things to Chris. Now tell me, y'all, how does a wife over-dramatize the fact that, one, Ashley's saying you're making her uncomfortable because you sent her a... DM saying that she should have come to the W and she felt like you were trying to get with one of her friends. Now Giselle is coming to me telling me that you made her feel uncomfortable because y'all had a private conversation in her hotel room. Mia is saying that you made her feel uncomfortable because you were staring at her inappropriately at Karen's party. 
And now Ashley again is coming to me and she's saying that you were flirting with one of her friends. And not only did you flirt, flirt with one of her friends, you touched the friend inappropriately. I don't think that's an over-dramatization of all the facts that had been presented to Candace that she knows are untrue and that Chris also knows is untrue and he's not in these scenes but he's hearing that this is what these are the things these women are saying about him and he's offended and he's saying well I have the facts on my side so if you guys continue to go down these lines of creating these false um false narratives for a TV show storyline destroying my character then yeah you will be sorry i don't think that that candace over dramatized anything and if robin was really on candace's side and on chris's side she'd have said you know what i understand why chris is popping off on twitter like, you came to the Sprint Evangelism and told me that Ashley said he groped one of her friends. And the Chris that we know would never do something like that. I mean, Michael Darby, yeah, maybe, but not Chris. Like, Robin provided no defense whatsoever. She just said the Bassets are wrong. Chris shouldn't be talking on social media. And Candace is over-dramatizing things. That right there was a very clear turn on Robin's end. She was no longer Team Candace and Team Chris. She forgot that the role that she was supposed to be playing in this whole storyline was neutral party, keep your hands clean, and let Giselle, Ashley, and now Mia do the dirty work in sullying this man's good reputation. Now, Candace is entering this Miami trip filming, you know, believing that her and Robin are cool. She doesn't know that Robin thinks that she's over-dramatizing things to Chris. You know, she doesn't understand at this point in time that Robin really, in my opinion, has never really been on hers or Chris's side. Robin was just plain neutral. So we go into the Miami trip, we all know what happened between Wendy and Mia. Candace comes later and she is, you know, being told by Robin, you know, what went down. And Robin is painting the picture that Wendy was wrong. Wendy is condescending. Wendy is the one that, you know, um, agitated the altercation or provoked Mia into throw in the drink and Candace is like no you know I am team Wendy on this like there's no reason for Mia to have done that they wake up the next morning um Candace makes you know a slick comment after they take a shot she says something like um only itches you know take lime or whatever something like that and Robin is offended. She was already in her feelings from the night before because she was trying to sway Candace into feeling like they were all on the right of not wanting Wendy around anymore after Wendy was attacked. Um, Robin is calling Candace all kinds of ales in the confessionals. And... You know, things go on and on on this Miami trip until we get to the dinner where Robin pulls out the speaker and she wants everybody to listen to what Candace had to say about them. Um, Candace said nothing in that IG live that was negative about Wendy, um, Karen, or Robin. In fact, she said only glowing things about Robin because at this point in Candace's mind her and Robin are cool she's not cool with Giselle she's not cool with Mia and she's not cool with Ashley so 
why would she say bad things about Robin? Why would she say bad things about Karen? Why would she say any negative things about Wendy? But Robin plays this clip and she doesn't play the live in its entirety. And she puts Candace on blast. And this is where I think Candace realizes, oh, Robin and I are not cool. <laughs> Robin doesn't see it for me. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Because at this point, outside of sticking up for Dr. Wendy Osefo, and rightfully so, what bad thing had Candace done to Robin that would have required all of that? So not only does it seem like Robin was the one helping to push the narrative about Chris along during the season, but she walks back her support the minute she states in that boutique scene that Candace was over-dramatizing Chris, um, things to Chris. Then she turns on Candace in that whole speaker box scene. She then goes to watch what happens live. And when asked if she believes Chris was lying or Giselle was lying about the whole incident in, in New York and the dressing room conversation. She says, and this is Robin, she says to Andy Cohen that she believes Giselle and that now that time has passed, she believes Giselle's version of the story and that Chris was inebriated and for those who don't know what that means it means that he was a little drunk or maybe tipsy so he can't act um accurately share his side of it and I'm looking at Robin like after everything that you've heard that entire season of filming and all the things that Giselle sprinkled on her story, you're really going to sit on this Watch What Happens live episode and say that Giselle is 100% telling the truth? The only correct answer for anyone who was not there, the only correct answer is, I can't say for sure who's lying or who's not because I wasn't there. For me... I am leaning towards Chris being the most honest in this whole situation because of all the things that Giselle sprinkled on the story and the things that she admitted on the reunion that she sprinkled onto the story. So for Robin to have sat on that Watch What Happens Live um, episode and say that Chris, that Giselle is 100% telling the truth and that she believes Giselle's story because Chris was inebriated, in essence, she made Chris the bad guy. She made Chris the liar. She walked back to her walked back her support. So for everybody who's like, Robin was the most supportive, no, she wasn't. In my opinion, she was the one who helped push the story along. And then she walked back that support during the season while filming. And after the season ended, she sat on the Watch What Happens live stage. And she said she believes Giselle's version of the story and that Giselle was not lying. Essentially meaning that Chris is the one that's lying about his version of the story. So the reunion is finally airing and Robin is behind a paywall on Patreon with Giselle and she's letting us know that Juan went down to a hotel and dropped his credit card on a receipt for a woman from Canada that he was talking to in the DMs, but, you know, they didn't have any intimate relations. He was just helping this beautiful stranger out. And she's also, as we're watching the reunion, she's also saying that we have all need to, we all need to admit that 
a married man being alone in a hotel room with a single woman is not okay. All right, Robin, we can give you that, but we can also raise you one more. In the context of Chris being in the same hotel room with in the same hotel with his wife, who is pretty much down the hall. All you ladies are in the same hotel. A reunion is happening. There are lots of movements. And you know that this man's character is not one where he has been caught cheating on his wife before and that he sees all of you as friends and we're all grown people. We're all mature individuals who should be able to differentiate between someone wanting to be inappropriate and someone just wanting to have a private conversation, then we should be able to say, well, as human beings, we should be able to have conversations privately with the opposite sex without it becoming what Giselle has made it between her and Chris. Because in my opinion, Chris was being an adult. He also understood the optics, which is why they both agreed that they should leave the room door open. But outside of that, his intent was not to go in that room to be inappropriate with Giselle. And you all know this. That was just another way for Robin to help throw Chris under the bus the bus. Now, Robin is on her Patreon and she's saying that inappropriate conversations that one was having with this woman from Canada in the DMs and him going down to the hotel and putting his credit card on a hotel room is not signs of Juan doing anything wrong. He was just being stupid, but he didn't do anything wrong. He was just being a helpful, nice guy, right? She can say that about Juan, (laughs) but on the reunion stage, she's saying that a single, well, a married man going to speak to his single female friend in her hotel room with the door open while his wife is downstairs or perhaps in her room is sign of misconduct. That's BS. That's some BS right there. Now, when Chris Bassett got wind of what Robin said on the reunion stage, He tweeted, Robin ain't shit for this comment. This completely contradicts everything you said at lunch with Candice and I. And after everything that has come out after the reunion, let me have been the one basically to have put my credit card on a hotel room receipt. We knew what would have happened. We know what would have happened if Chris was the one to have gone down to a hotel and put his name on a hotel room receipt for another woman. We see what's happening right now with the allegations that have been debunked, right? So for the people who want to say that Chris spoke on Juan and Robin's situation, that's the tweet that they bring up, but they bring it up in the context of Chris just coming out of nowhere and talking about the hotel receipt situation and not putting it in its accurate accurate context that Chris was responding to Robin's statement on the reunion. And after the reunion and after everything came out about Juan and the woman from Canada, Candace also, you know, tweeted a thread on on. Twitter, um, where she 
basically said, you know, there's an expectation that in doing no harm, we show up to this platform as our authentic, as our authentic selves. And we do reserve the right to share, um, some things and, 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 and to not share other things. However, she felt like when people purposefully bury certain stories in an effort to create false narratives about other people, that's unfair. And even though we know that she was tweeting in the context of everything that was exposed by Robin about her situation with with Juan, if you looked deeper, um, you could also feel like she was talking about Giselle. Giselle had um, health issues during season seven that she did not speak on. We didn't really get much in terms of me and what she was dealing with, with her cancer, no cancer scare. We didn't get much on her you know, relationship with Jacqueline or Jacqueline's relationship with Mia and and G. Um, we didn't really get to hear much about Ashley and her divorce and what was happening there. We heard a little bit about Karen being in a picture hugged up with another man that wasn't Ray. We didn't get to hear a lot about that either. So Yes, if you are a Robin defender, you're going to say, well, she was talking about Robin when she made that, when she made that tweet. But I also feel like, yes, it was directed to Robin's situation, but it was also directed to the other people on the cast who was part of spreading this narrative about Chris while not speaking on other things in their own lives or in the lives of their friends that were actually true. So y'all, this is my little deep dive into why I believe that Robin was definitely party to conversations regarding bringing that narrative about Chris Bassett to the show during season seven and why I believe in my opinion, she's also more at fault for where the friendship between her and Candace is at the moment. Thank you for watching or listening and as usual as I always say walk good and be good to somebody like share and subscribe to the channel leave a comment so I can know how you see things as well until next time bye